So Jam Dash AI is a pretty interesting topic, honestly, but it's not something that you can easily make because there is very little information on the GD objects. You can guess the hitbox of them, but you don't really know how actually big it is. And the game itself is really fucking terrible. It, it's been programmed terribly and it's really just inconsistent and a lot of other stuff that people who probably try to hack GD know, but I still try to make something. I've seen two pretty interesting videos about GD AI before trying to make this. And the thing is that both of them were created using simulations of GD. One of them was made completely by a person and the other simulation was made using some fan-made version of GD. So in both of these cases, the person had access to the source code and they could edit how the game actually works. They could pause it, they, they could just do anything to the game at runtime, which would make the AI pretty easy to make or at least control and simulate and all that stuff. But I myself wanted to be really accurate to the real game. So instead I tried to make it work for GD with all the information I had. And the information I had was if the player is dead, player's XI coordinates, player's velocity, gravity, game mode, and all that stuff. And of course the level details. So the first thing I made was pretty fucking terrible, honestly. I, I picked the level, Stereo Madness, and I picked a online version of the level so I can actually download it and like uh, view the whole level. And in the level there are 30 different objects. So I decided to make an AI by a 10 by 20 grid and there were 30 different grids for each object. And in each of those grids, if there was an object in the approximate location of the grid, then the input would be fed into the AI as a one and else it would be fed as a minus one, basically. And I also gave some extra information to the AI, like the velocity or the gravity. And I streamed it on YouTube for eight hours. And the thing is that with this kind of AI, it doesn't really know which objects are decorations and it should ignore those objects and which ob objects are the actual spikes, the actual uh, cubes and all that stuff. And if it learned how to react to a certain cube, then if there's another cube that has the same hitbox, it would have to relearn the same cube because the AI doesn't know that the object behaves the same. So it was pretty shit. I'm pretty sure it got like 14 or 15 percent in like the the first four hours and in the next four hours it got nothing new it was that's it you can blame a lot of things for why it didn't work but honestly i i figured that it would be because of the the many different objects and the fact that it would have to learn what to do for each specific object so after that i wasn't really sure what to do until someone uh, in the gd programming discord server uh, suggested me that i could only use the objects that have hitboxes so they gave me an array of object id that all have a hitbox and the way they found it out was just by using the editor and just testing all the objects or just having experience with the editor or GD and just knowing which objects have hitboxes and then just placing them all in the level, uploading it and then running a program to check the uploaded level and extract all the IDs of the objects and only 10 objects were with hitboxes. So if I ignored all the objects that don't have a hitbox and try to run the same AI again, it would probably run a little bit faster since it can just ignore all the bad objects. But that's not what I decided to do. Uh, actually, if you look at all the cube objects, all of them literally have the same hitbox. So I just figured what if I try to figure out the hitbox of all the objects, at least all the objects that are used in Stereo Madness. And I just took the level that was uploaded with the objects that had hitboxes, and I just decided to do that. And it took me quite, uh, it took me a couple hours, maybe like I know seven, not that much honestly. And I had hitboxes of a decent amount of objects. And the way I figured out the hitboxes for those objects was. I tried to treat all the object hitboxes as a square because that's most likely. And for all the objects, this guess was pretty accurate. And even if that's not true, it doesn't matter because the hitboxes don't have to be pixel perfect as long as the AI figures out what to do. And the way I got the, these hitboxes was I just took an object that I wanted to figure out the hitbox for and I just played the game and I used a ball game mode with slow mode and I just waited for me to get close to the object and then see at which X chord net I die uh, and I had a separate program running uh, always checking the x coordinate of my character in GD. I did the same thing with the i coordinate and basically that's what I did for all the objects. 
So after I made that, I decided to run the program on Stereo Madness and generate an image of all the hitboxes. And one funny thing I found out was that Stereo Madness had objects that cannot be placed in the editor. They were objects with the ID 9 and with the ID 40. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's more objects in the official levels that cannot be placed in the editor. Honestly, I have no idea why that is, but that just wrapped up for you. So I just sorted that out and I got a pretty good looking image of the Stereo Madness hitbox. And uh, I'm gonna show you the hitbox I generated for Bloodbath if you wanna see that. But of course it, it still doesn't work with all of the objects because I just didn't wanna bother. Uh, it doesn't work with saws yet and it ignores all the orbs, all the portals and all the other stuff. And there are some like really thin objects. So if you compress the hitbox for the AI to read, it's possible that it could just ignore the really thin objects, which might fuck up your gameplay. But anyway, there's that, so I created a new AI. And the AI basically used the same principle. It got positions of stuff around it, depending on its XI coordinates. And since I had less information to feed it, because I didn't have a shit ton of objects, I only had the hitbox. So instead I fed it minus one if the object at a specific location can kill you, one if it's just a normal block, and zero if there's nothing there. Zero for white, one for black, and minus one for red, basically. And I also gave it more extra input, which was the size of the cube, how fast it's falling or going up, the, the velocity, its gravity, one or minus one, its speed, and one or minus one for each of the possible game modes. So in total, there is only 1,508 inputs because the screen I gave it was 50 by 30. Actually, it's possible that I tweaked that when I ran the stream on my laptop, but for my first AI, I had over 9,000 that that wasn't a fucking joke holy shit. Uh, i had over 9000 inputs so this was way more accurate and way less information to process so i figured this would be way better and maybe it would be able to even get the ship art but i was pretty fucking disappointed when I ran it before streaming, I actually got like 10% in the first 10 minutes. So I was really impressed and surprised. And I just stopped it and started the stream and just started streaming, hoping it would get a lot of fucking percent and it would be pretty good. But instead it just did shit. The best it got was 26%, but it was like legit streaming for maybe two whole days. And at the time I'm recording this, it's still streaming and the number of attempts is 28,000. So yeah, that's pretty terrible. If I had to guess why it didn't do so well, I think it's because I give it way too much input because the spikes and the, all, all the objects aren't really that big and you could just compress the image even more and it would have way less stuff to learn but still be able to function enough. And also I could probably tweak the AI config file to make it learn better but honestly i just don't really know much about ai and this is more of a learning experience rather than something i'm actually good at yeah that's that's it that's honestly all it got and also someone else made it an ai but with a different idea instead of looking at the actual level and looking at all the stuff made an ai that would generate all the inputs depending on the x coordinate of the level and the AI got 30% in 30 minutes. Uh, and I'm gonna link the source code for that program also. But the thing is that even if this AI learned the level and beat the level, it would have to relearn for each different level. And while seeing it progress faster is pretty cool, it's still not a functional AI. I'm also gonna link my AI and all the code I used in the description if you're interested in trying to read that and running it yourself. And honestly, like uh, the thing with this whole GD AI thing is, as I mentioned at the start, there's just no simulation for GD. The GD game is fucking terrible, it's slow. There's no way to speed it up. And if you wanna simulate uh, 15,000 attempts, then it will take you a long time because there's no, there's no easier way to simulate the attempts besides playing the actual game. And hopefully in the near future, or maybe it's just in the future in general, someone is gonna make a drum dash simulation that has the same gravity, the same the same hitboxes, the same everything. And using that simulation, we're gonna be able to simulate proper AIs way, way faster, and then just run them on the actual drum dash game. And that would be pretty cool. But in order to remake GD, it's gonna be fucking annoying. It's gonna take way too much time. And yeah. Hope you enjoyed this kind of informational video. And as I said, maybe I'll try to config it better. Maybe I'll try to look into AI and what are my possibilities to make it better. 
and maybe I'll upload the video of it getting 100% on Stereo Madness one day. Uh, also, also one, one thing I need to mention, the thing with uh, playing Stereo Madness is that Stereo Madness has a lot of freedom to the player. It could just maybe jump at certain times when it doesn't have to specifically jump. And because of that, AI just sometimes randomly jumps for no reason. And while it's alright because it could be the first few percent of the level, uh, later in the level it won't be able to deal with everything else in the level when the jumps are more complicated and all that, all that stuff. And also I'll link s some more stuff in the description that I mentioned. Thanks for watching. Um, I have a Discord server. It, actually, if you're interested in this AI, you can just join my Discord server. And if you have more questions, you can talk to me and I'll answer them. If I didn't explain them clearly enough in this video, and I'll give you more information. I have a Twitter. Um, that's all I have. Leave a like, subscribe, and see you in the next video.